<laughs> All right. Good evening, everyone. Uh, we are so happy to be here with you uh, this evening. Listen, Tri-Stone Church of Chicago is celebrating our 78-year church anniversary. And we have a treat for you today. We are interviewing our pastor, our leader, our bishop, the one and only, the Honorable Bishop Simon Gordon. You know, a lot of times people don't really know, you know, our leader, but he has agreed to come and allow us to just interview him so that we can get to know uh, our bishop, our leader, in a more intimate way. We got Elder Stefan Rackett. Y'all know Elder Stefan. We got Elder Metro Dukes and myself. So we just going to just come on out and just we just going to get to know our bishop and just ask him some questions. Bishop. Uh, you are, how are you today, sir, as a matter of fact? <laughs> I am terrific, Kia Bande, and so good to see the three of you guys, Netra and Stefan, you two. All right. Good, good, good. Listen, we are in our 78th year. We're celebrating our 78th year, and on in this coming March, I think you will be celebrating starting your 32nd year. Am I correct? You're absolutely correct. And the only one on this phone that's 78 years old is Stefan. Look at this. All hand. right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. He's hiding that. He's hiding that really well. So, Bishop, mm -hmm. you you know, every pastor has an installation. I'm a I'm a history person. This is probably the only question that I'll ask. Um, every pastor has an installation service. Uh, how did you connect with Tridestone? Oh, I, I connected with Tristone. That's not the installation part of it. Though. I know, I know, I know, I know. The, I connected with Tristone through the relationship that have, that existed between Deacon Outlaw and my father, Reverend J.P. Gordon. Okay. And uh, my dad would have me come and preach his four o'clock services on the first Sunday on Pastor, Pastor's Aid Sunday. That's what they used to call it, Pastor's Aid. <laughs> Pastor's Aid Sunday at St. Matthew Baptist Church, 4511 South State Street. And during Pastor's Aid Sunday, I would do the four o'clock service and trustees would come in and then deacons would come in. I didn't know who the people was, but I think the bishop was having them listen to me so they can to have me kind of interview toward uh, becoming a pastor at Trasto. Wow, wow. And so here's my here's my installation question. Who preached your installation? I, I'm interested in Insta to know that. There was two installation services and one installation week. The first revival, and that was revival week, followed right. by revival week. Installation service, the first one was done by my dad, of course. And then the next night was done by Willie Jordan. St. Mark. Oh, wow. That's right, interesting. Absolutely. Okay. And, and then uh, the very first week of revival that took place, that was done by the one and only Consuela York. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. She was, okay. Uh, we worked, I worked the prison system with them. And so that's who really uh, was the kickoff, you know, in my pastorate, those three individuals. Wow, wow. You learn something new every day. All right, Elder Natural. Okay, take Nature. it away. Really? Yeah. You're going to have me go next? Oh, <laughs> wonderful. Wonderful. Uh, I remember, Bishop, um, as it relates to you becoming pastor of um, Tristone, you talked about that process with um, Deacon Outlaw and them and how they, you know, pretty much had you, you know, being looked at even before becoming pastor and you were saying how that decision you know can you talk to us a little bit about that decision i could because i remember you sharing how you were a businessman um you know you worked at the university and you were a businessman so it's like you are doing the will of the lord you're you know you're active in music and you're being a servant and you're doing particular things but going from uh, just kind of where you were in life to really grasping and embracing the fact that you were looked at to become a pastor. 
and going from that mind frame that you were in just as a businessman and switching over to now, I am literally stepping into a space where I'm a, going to shepherd well, you. Well, well, natural, I'm still a businessman. You're still a businessman. Yeah. Amen. You didn't change. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so none of that changed at all. Right. Jesus, Jesus said when he was 12 years old, I must be about my father's wow. business. Mm-hmm. So you just, you just say, hey, somebody felt that, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> so just the, 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 the author of the business change, the practice change, uh, but the, the regimen and the procedure and the process remain the same. So yeah, yeah. So I was at UFC, that's right, University of Chicago. Uh, and uh, during some of the time, I was also working for DCFS, wow. the children's, during, uh, during working with children. It was called Children's Youth, children's Youth Shelter up on the north side, up, uh, far north, before you get to Evanston area, far north. And so that was, uh, I was part of that, but uh, I was not interested in being a pastor. And I've never ever wanted to apply to be a pastor, and I, you know, always question why I am a pastor, even though I do it based upon, you know, gifting and who you are and where God placed you in life, and He show you who you are, even if you don't want to accept it yourself. So that's it. He put you where you need. I think I said that in Sunday sermon to some ex- some extent that God kind of label and put you in some particular places where, you know, he sets you up for your next while you wonder, why am I going through these issues of life? I think Sunday I say every issue that God takes you through has your next experience attached to it. That's what God does. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's how I got, that's how I got in here to try to try stone and pastoring leading people. I was already doing choirs. You guys already know that. I was already doing music, already doing business, and already a Bible teacher. So I was already teaching youth. I did that at the churches I was at before. I did that at uh, at Antioch, and I have played at a Cosmopolitan uh, Community Church, and I have played in, in um, of course, coming from my father's church. I started there uh, doing youth Bible classes back then. And so it was nothing for me to push toward and continue on. That's where Youth in Action came from. Youth in Action, the name of it came from a choir that started at Concord Baptist Church. It used to be called the Love in Action Choir. Mm-hmm. And so when I left there and started working with youth only in at Antioch in Argo, I changed it to Youth in Action. And that's where uh, Youth in Action kind of really began. That's why seven members from Youth in Action Choir came to Tristone when I came there as a church because I forbidden any of them to come, but they wanted to go where I was. The majority, it, it was 150 choir members there, and I, I didn't want them to tear that church apart uh, by following me to because I was called the pastor, mm-hmm. at which uh, Pastor Jordan, who la- later on became Bishop Jordan, told me later on, uh, it's none of your business who go with you. Just go do God's will and let them. And so, you know, he said, you, that will scatter them. And he was actually right. Many of them scattered and did not stay at Antioch and Argo. Some of them went out to uh, a progressive life uh, cathedral. And, oh, and others Al- went to Apostle Al- Alfred. Back then, he was Elder Alfred and Pastor Alfred, mm-hmm. you know, at Progressive Church of God in Christ. And they yes, went sir. to other areas and they, where they can get that feel that we kind of have, you know, because they couldn't get it in the regular Baptist church. And some of them came uh, and a few of them came to Triadstone and continued on with the Youth in Action theme. Yep. I love it. I love it. It reminds me um, how you taught us that pretty much when we hear the call, you've really already been walking in it. That's absolutely right. That's, that's, that's absolutely right. God never calls you into anything that you cannot already do, whether you know you can do it or not. Mm-hmm. That's good. Now, we talked about 31 years. 31 years of pastor. So as you look back, I know you're a man that deals with legacy, even records, 
and things like that. Um, what would you say are some of your greatest accompli- accomplishments as a pastor? I don't, man, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if I look at things like that that way. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I am a, I think part of the theme is t- turning achievement into success. I look at making a success out of every conversation, out of every relationship, out of every reaction, out of every opportunity, out of every door opening. I look at making success out of it. And that means that what you do in a, toward accomplishment has to be something that's innately inside of you because it's the way that you just live and the way that you function as a lifestyle. And so uh, what people call accomplishments, oh, wow, a lot has happened. Um, I don't know that I could take credit for anything other than being willing to say, God, whatever you want to do next, here I am. Let's do this. And so when uh, pushing toward the youth, the church was not 100% 100% for the youth in action because it was using kids who didn't belong to our church. Mm-hmm. It was using kids from the neighborhood and the streets and the schools and people who weren't active in their own churches. And they just came in and would come to our service and some parents would make them leave and then go to their own church. You know, they just love to come and sing together out of Morgan Park High School, Simeon, and out of uh, uh, Curie and uh, Julian across the street. And they would come in and... Uh, it ended up that as they came, hey, and as things happened, eventually as they got older and established, they became a part of the church ministry. You know, they began to function that particular way. You know, so um, that's kind of the uh, way that the church took off. Uh, because you know, when I came to the church, uh, well, the church had gone through several different challenges with several different pastors. And so it was a new thing for them um, to have, you know, uh, somebody like me when I came. I was, first of all, I was not pushing to be a pastor. I didn't even like the title. The youth and the kids called me Simon. That drove the leaders nuts. He's (laughs) Reverend Gordon. He's Pastor Gordon, that kind of stuff. And you see some of the older ones now, they still have challenges wrestling with well Simon they had to start saying Simon then Bishop and then after pastor and then Bishop and get it out you know some of them struggle struggle with it because as kids I did not put them in the posture where they had to have all of that dialogue now they're grown men and grown women they've learned to do it and pass it on to the next generation but when they were kids they didn't see the relevance in it because you know I handled them as if we were all one team you know And we're in this whole uh, exploration of success in life. And we all got our part to play. That's the way that was. So there's a lot of things that's taken place, of course, you know. We came from the one church and we came from a small setting of less than 50 people in the church, less than 50. I mean, we've gotten up as far as membership, at least over to over 3,000, even though we only, you know, in the last couple of years have been only able to see, see, you know, see between maybe 1,000 and 1,500 in the week that attend services. If you just add everybody and see how many people attend services. Uh, But, you know, a large part of our growth, you know, uh, has taken place. And, um, you know, you, you, you know, you really don't get it. You know, people people don't go to church like they used to go to church. They stopped doing that. But when September hit, all of a sudden our church was packed into the balcony. And I'll be looking like, well, where are the visitors? Oh, these are all members. They seasonal. They come in September because school starts and they hang on out all through the almost the end of the year and stuff along that line. And then in January, they can't do much else. It's cold, getting cold. They come to church. And we have church and have the best offerings that we have for the year, always January through through April, because people are coming to church. And when the you know spring come and the, and the, and the, and the uh, and summer, they act like Kia Bondi. They got they want to be outside, and go to the beach, you know, <laughs> <laughs> along that line. Wow! And then okay. and, and, and Stefan, he want to go and get on stage and be on the show right. and do all that kind of stuff. So like, yeah, ain't no show going on. I'm up out of here, you know. So it's that kind of stuff we have to. Naturally, the only good girl, right? That's so what we tell them. 
No. Thick and thin. Thick and thin. <laughs> She just uh, quiet. That's all. <laughs> yes. So so yes, yeah, Stefan, that's that's the kind of stuff. I think the church has done wonderful things. I mean, you know, we've grown leaps and bounds as I've been there. Of course, we've had great bands, great music. One of the greatest changes in the church have been the flow. They didn't have a flow. A lot of churches don't know what a flow is. Right. But all of our services have a flow. Every one of them. Another thing is we have great great music great word great experience that's kind of what that's that's the whole part of it you know that's why we start the services with that dialogue naming those particular four things because that's what we offer to the community immediately uh, another thing that's that's there uh is that freedom of the holy spirit you know a lot of baptist churches did not have that you know and we've always had it since i've been there you know and then a freedom of uh, inventiveness and create creativeness that we write songs in service and then make records out of them. We've done four records, one, two, three, four records since 2000. And before then we did Dow Heaven and uh, uh, what is the first, uh, well, first freedom. record? Uh, and Freedom, right? Freedom. freedom, Freedom 1991. We did Freedom. And that's before full gospel, we were speaking in tongue and doing worship service. Full gospel started in 1994. 1991, we did our first concert at Greater St. Stephen's in New Orleans, Youth in Action did, for their uh, vacation Bible school. That's before anybody even knew in our area who Bishop Paul S. Morton was. Wow. Wow. Good stuff, Bishop. Wow. I'm telling y'all too much because y'all going to mess up my trivia. No, we're not. That's coming on, 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 the, on the Friday night. Hold it on the tape, too. On Friday night of the uh, Friday night of the church anniversary, it's going to be a trivia night. And uh, uh, eight, to ten of minist- eight to ten of the ministries can offer a contestant, one contestant, to come to the church, everybody else on Zoom, and we're going to ask them old questions and see which ministry wins from wow. the trivia night. That's going to be good. Wow. It's going to be fun. Awesome. Be be fun. Just while, be while we're on your impact on the uh, youth that you um, shepherded in the Tristone, do you know who um, your first or a few of the first ones that you actually um, licensed and ordained as a pastor? The first, pre- the, fr- the first preacher, first of all, the first preacher was Leslie Rollins called. Mm-hmm. Yep. The second one was Dante Adger. Okay. Yep. The third one was Master Knowles. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then eventually came the others, you know, which, you know, would be, of course, Terry, uh, which is Terry Jackson now. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, and there would be, of course, the three C's. It was Collins then, Larise mm-hmm. Collins, White now, mm-hmm. Charmel Cannon, Michelle Culpepper, uh, and then Ruth Adair. Right. Later on was Johnny Swain. She was not in that first group. Later on, I made her and Flora. I put them in that, in that same posture and position, Flora Poston. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. Now you, you always talk about connecting and being connected to people that's kingdom minded. And so one of the questions I was here is saying, uh, who are some of the people or that gave you the greatest influence as far as in ministry, business or in life in general? Who well, you look at the, you? the business stuff. Well, well, that's, that's the people who influenced me. Uh, motivator, probably you have to say like, uh, I watched a lot of people. So I can say that a lot of people, of course, my dad is going to be number one because of who he was. Um, 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 I'll say number two, that Henry Hardy for language, because he always, the way that he spoke and preached, he used the language well, and people were wondering what the heck he was saying. And I was saying, he's making these words make sense. And that's where I got particularly from him. Uh, my dad, of course, to break down the words, then as far as a motivation to excel, that hands down goes to uh, Miles Monroe, 
who stood as a mentor for me for a period of time, who did it along in that particular area. A uh, motivation to do more churching, that came from Larry Trotter, you know, mm-hmm. because, you know, I could actually take the church and I'm not take it some days, you know, but that's all they ever do. But, but you know, I had to make it part of my particular habit because people like that. People like, you know, especially in Chicago, they like churching. They like that churching thing. That's church, you know, that kind of deal. Uh, Bishop Paul Morton for growing the church, you know, expanding, being organizationally in relationship. And it was not that he did anything hands-on with it other than present full gospel and then allow me to be a part of growing that in, that institution which opened the door for the uh the church in itself as an organism uh to, to grow triad stone to make it grow and i'll and and i'll never say it's anything less than that even to this very day that the church growth happens by the people who are excited by it and one of the largest dangers to the growth of a church is people who are in leadership who've become complacent because they stop the church from growing. Mm. Wow. Wow. They just do automatically. You know, when everybody's excited, everybody is a winner. Right. Everybody brings somebody to church. Everybody's on fire. Every, when everybody's like that and the message that everybody comes from is stemming from the pulpit and not the people themselves, mm-hmm. then the church grows. But when everybody wants to be the messenger, then there becomes little uh, thiefdoms and little, little, little small organizations in the church where people uh, pull authority for themselves. And that's what happens in any church. And it has to be kind of, there's always has to be a pruning and a pulling away to make things happen. And if we don't do it, I've learned that God then will do it. He'll get rid of some people who you think you need. Right. Ooh, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> that really speaks to um, everyone being a piece of the puzzle that you have definitely um, implemented in Tri-Stones and uh, reiterate for all of the leaders to grab hold of and to follow. Because uh, when we do, when we get that, you know, we'll understand that it, it, it's all going towards one big piece where God gets the glory and it's not about the little pieces being you know, apart doing their own thing. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And, and the responsibility of the person who is the peace or the ministry that is the peace, that they keep it what? I said vibrant, vibrant. that they keep it relevant, mm-hmm. and that it's my job as leader to cut its edges to make it fit the, pit, the puzzle so that it fits. And when people look at the ministry and the other ministry and the other ministry, it all looks like it's a part of the picture. And that's what vision is. Vision is the picture that we all paint together. Um, all right. Bishop, that almost was spoke in tongue right there. I almost spoke in tongue. Hey, Bob. Almost. <laughs> almost went in. Almost went in right there. Right, yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you know what? Before we and before we move on, Bishop, do you see that happening? Now. That, I think the next, yeah, it, it happens. See, in the in the nineties, you got a few young people here now. You had one happen maybe about 10, 15 years ago. Uh, that's John Hannah's church. Mm-hmm. He was a young boy in getting choirs together, just like I did 20, 15 years before him. You know, and get all these music kids and stuff together from all these different churches, have concerts, got the city to back them, doing these, bringing artists in. All of a sudden, you start a church, and now all those young people flock to your church, and now you don't have no room to put them, and you got to come up with a place to have service. Wow. That was just a, the same replica that we did back in 1989 and 90, the same exact thing. Keep moving now and go to the mo- today's modern. That's what I told a lot, uh, some of the pastors that we that we function with, uh, Pastor Meeks, uh, H.D. H. Daniel Wilson, that's a, those are our relationship, Trotter, uh, during the time, we, we, they were the mega churches. You know, Tristone was the youth mega church 
because everybody flocked to all the youth flocked trash on these tell me you got so many kids up in there da, 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 y'all ain't got no money we got the money but the whole deal is their churches were getting older just like Tristone would get older mm-hmm. and so t- so today you got the same different kind of methodology yeah so you got another young pastor that comes up on the scene on the east side um um i'm gonna call his name um uh what's this church on the, on, on the east side uh i'm trying to think of the name of the church uh Huh? Not Matthew, Matthew Stevens? Stevens? Yeah, Matthew, but I'm Matthew. trying to think of the name of his church. Um, all, all Nations. All Nations. Yeah. All Nations, okay. All Nations comes up and basically has the same deal. Same they deal. pull artists in and artists come, the kids flock to see the latest artists and, they, and he has a prophetic word that's different than the way that they're hearing in their traditional preaching take place and they flock over there. It's the same cycle, the same system. And, and people are drawn based upon their age groups. And so any church now that you can look at that has babies, children, adolescents, youth, young adult, and and adults and seniors, that's a that's a well balanced church. Yeah. Because what you see now is those who did not keep up with any of those groups, mm-hmm. you'll see all old people in it. Mm-hmm. So or you'll see all kids in it. Or you'll see a few teenagers and a few old folk and ain't nobody else left. That's true. But to have a numbers in all of those, that's what strategically was about having a children's church and having deliberate ministries that tap into all the different facets of where people are. Excellent. That's it. Excellent. All right. Go, Richard. Wow. God. What Our production it? team is telling us that we time is winding down. All right. <laughs> so, Praise God. Bishop, I'm, listen. I, I'm, I'm awesome. so hungry. I'm so hungry. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm sitting at, I'm sitting <laughs> in the car <laughs> rest, at the restaurant saying, when I'm going to get you, let's go and eat. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, we all won't disturb you then, sir. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, Bishop, thank you so very much, sir. We we certainly appreciate all these nuggets and all this intimate time we have spent. I learned something new, and that's what it's all about. I believe that the people are blessed that's going to watch it because I know I was. I mean, I learned I learned a whole lot about it. I thought I knew everything that was to know about. It. <laughs> uh, see, y- see y'all, but, uh, y'all got some. You got some more coming. You got some more coming. So I want to uh, encourage everybody to come to our church anniversary. Yes. You know, and understand that we have one service that's on Sunday, the third Sunday on Friday. I told y'all what's happening. We're ha- having that opportunity where we have that you know, that game, a trivia show to talk about the history mm-hmm. where ministries are in in. in uh, in uh, contests against each other with their representative and everybody else on Zoom cheering for. We'll have it up on the screen, you know, and, and we're going to really have a great time in doing that. And then all the activity, we're going to celebrate. We got a celebration coming up, asking men, men, ministries this week to start putting up people on our, uh, what we call our um, uh, achievement, to, on our achievement banner. The achievement battery is because as we go on the anniversary, remember we're talking about turning achievement into success. And so every ministry, everybody who knows somebody who's done a great achievement since COVID or this year, we're asking them to put their name on the banner, what they did, and we're gonna have acknowledgments of all those particular people and those ministries as far as uh, what we do, because we think people have been outstanding as we come through this whole coronavirus and at the end, allowing us to win yes it's all about engaging 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 and being successful in it it's about to push us to our new church theme because as we do that even all the way to the hoods that you know everybody's buying their little hoodies we're gonna have a hoodie night when it comes to church conference in december all yeah. right yeah. 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 It, it was it, it was here first because you putting a whole lot of stuff out there, Bishop. It was here first. It came here first. That's right. It did come here first. Y'all got it first. That's right. Uh, all right. All right. So we love you, sir. Love you, sir. Love you, guys, too. And we on your side. <laughs> we were the wheel fall off. Well, <laughs> bless you, sir. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Uh, 
Stay strong. And everybody watching us, hey, y'all love God, love each other, and watch God bless your life. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Amen.